welcome back to C2E2. I am Tiffany Smith, and I am here with the one and only Travis McElroy. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm actually not the only one. There's also a Canadian uh, children's book writer named Travis McElroy. Have you looked? Some free press. Have Go you looked Travis. in like the phone book or looked up to see how many of you yes, there are? Yes, of course I there's have. There's only two? There's, okay, so there's, uh, I think, a minor league baseball player, a Canadian children's book author, and there's somebody who's on IMDb already who's Travis McElroy. And I'm sure there's others too. That's just the first people that came up in Google. And immediately, I feel like I am right in one of the podcasts of my brother, yeah. my brother and Listen, me. That I'm, you're like, I'm I looked at all, all this time. up. This is exactly how we are. And that, that's what I think so many people relate to and connect to with what you guys do is the fact that it really does feel like this is exactly how you guys talk to each other. This is exactly how families and siblings yeah. relate. What was that like for you once you realized that everybody and so many fans are out there that want to hear all of that stuff? Because I don't think anybody wants ridiculous. to hear my sister and I talking about stuff. Why are y'all listening to this? <laughs> it's so dumb. No, it, it, it was great. It was really, um, especially at this point, we've done mm, 400 episodes of My Brother, My Brother, and Me. And the fact that there's, hey, thanks. <laughs> the, the fact that like we occasionally will get tweets where it's like, I just started listening. It's like, really? Yeah. Thank you. And then they're like, I'm going to go back and listen to all the other ones. And it's like, don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so if somebody's a new fan, you're like, just start from where we are now and don't look back. No, don't go, go back. back. You can go backwards to episode 100 and then burn the rest. Really? Oh, it was a different time. No, we, we uh, have grown a lot in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, both in like cultural awareness um, and, and being uh, more aware of like the jokes and the impact we make and that kind of thing, but also just audio quality. <laughs> a lot of it's really bad. We started recording on microphones from the uh, video game Rock Band. Yes. Yes, you did. That's I love that. That's not a joke. That's true. And it's garbage. It sounds like we recorded into tin cans, like little kids in a family circle but comic listen, strip. Here's what's so cool. And this is what I love about the podcast world and conventions and fans in general, that you can start with something like that and build an audience and grow and they'll grow along with you. What's some of the coolest stuff that you guys have experienced just from talking to and meeting fans at conventions like this, where they're like, we have been listening from the beginning or I've learned X, Y, Z from you. Um, one of the really nice things, um, very sincerely, is like we get people who will tell us like they were going through a really hard time and that our very ridiculous uh, podcast helped take their mind off of it. Mm -hmm. And that's like a really, really wonderful thing to hear because sometimes like, especially when the world gets very serious and there's a lot of very intense stuff going on, it can feel very frivolous yeah. to make comedy stuff and feel like, am I, I, I'm not doing anything to actually help. I'm just making a dumb show. And then somebody's like, that really took my mind off of it. And that is, that is very nice to find out. And so uh, getting to interact with people and find that out and also just like, knowing it means something to people mm -hmm. because I also feel that way about other stuff that other people make. Mm -hmm. And so like knowing that someone feels that way about something I make is very humbling and very, very wonderful. Yeah. Well, and the cool thing is too, we just, you walked out here and the fans that are here waiting just were cheering and wanting to talk to you from Hi, the everybody. audience, which I love so much. Hi. Cheering already. And I'm sure everybody online is doing the exact same thing. If you're, if you're screaming at your computer screen, waiting for me to respond, hi. <laughs> That's exactly what I was hoping you would do. <laughs> Awkward stare. How long can you hold that for? A really long time. <laughs> long enough that it stops being funny and just starts being like actually weird. So like, yeah. hey, could you go? I want to make you do it, but I won't. I won't subject everyone to that. But I, what's so cool too is obviously, you know, you've got the fans that maybe you haven't met and you're saying there's things that you listen to and that you're a fan of. And I'm sure along the way, there's some pretty famous fans of the show, of the podcast. What does that feel like for you when people connect with you guys or you hear that someone like Lin-Manuel Miranda is a fan? Who? Um, Who's that? It's, re it's weird is the answer. And not in a bad way. It's weird in a very nice way, but it's... One of the things, uh, if Justin and Griffin are watching, they're going to shake their heads at me, but it feels very nice. <laughs> um, because <laughs> it's nice to know that people appreciate the thing you make. And it also, it took us a really long time. I mean, we've been doing it for like eight or nine years now. Yeah, I was going to say, and it's like the eight year anniversary or something. Yeah, and it took a really, really long time 
to feel legitimate in any way. Like imposter syndrome runs very strong in the McRoy family. <laughs> um, and I think in a lot of us. And so really the, one of the things that was a big step for us is when we made the My Brother, My Brother and Me TV show, we were, thank you. So, the, but the rest of that sentence is so nervous <laughs> um, and really felt like, why do we get to do this? And like the day before we started shooting our showrunner, J.D. Amato, handed us compasses that he had had engraved with professional comedian um, because like we That's didn't them. think of ourselves that way. Yeah. And he was like, it was, you know, it's a metaphor about like knowing the way and like, you know, the way because you're it was very great. And it really helped us like feel like, oh yeah, we are getting paid to, we get paid to make joke. We are doing this too. And it's, I think we're still kind of feeling that more and more every day, but like we just recorded an episode from the red carpet or the blue carpet of Escape to Margaritaville. Thank you. <laughs> and it was the weirdest. Because yeah. maybe that was, that was maybe the biggest spike of imposter syndrome I've ever felt. Like we, yeah. I think quite literally, we're not supposed to be there. Like everybody coming through was like, and what is this? In. What is going on? It's like, we're a podcast on a red carpet. Why? I don't know. <laughs> and so then we do something like that. By the end of it, we're like, oh, okay, we can do yeah. this. This is fine. This is... Not normal, but it's okay. Well, and I have to ask because you guys obviously do give some great and some interesting advice here and there. If you could give advice to somebody who was suffering from, you know, imposter syndrome, syndrome because I think a lot of people who are performers all feel that way. Yeah. And that's why you want to get better. You want to do more because you show up somewhere and you're like, oh my God, someone's going to find me out that I'm not supposed to be here. I mean, I feel that way. I'm like, everyone. what am I doing up here right now? The advice <laughs> is ev everyone feels that way. Like... That I think that, well, uh, not everyone, because there's also a section of people who are like, I am supposed to be here. And they're also great. Um, <laughs> Some of them. Uh, but most of the time, like, what you start, it's the same thing you kind of learn in elementary school and middle school, well, at least looking back on it, is that you get so worried about people judging you, and then you figure out, like, oh, no, wait, they're also worried about that. And everybody's so worried about not supposed to be, not being supposed to be there fine is that they about, are about not, people finding out they're not supposed to be sure there. that's a better way if you want to say it like that that's great you know and and so i think everyone's comedian so, host yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great <laughs> and so i think everyone's so worried about that that like they're not actually judging whether or not someone else is yeah. supposed to be there and especially a lot of it is like walking up and just like because we get to ask this question a lot too like one of the most uh the questions we get the most is like how do you make friends as an adult mm -hmm. And it is because I think as an adult, you lose the sense of like, this is fine that you have when you're like four years old and you're four yeah. years old and you walk up to somebody and go, you're my friend. And they're like, okay. <laughs> and then you become an adult and you're like, I'm not supposed to do that anymore. And I think it's the same as like, why it's really hard to like jump into a conversation when you're an adult. Mm -hmm. Cause you're like worried you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. Or like when you go to an event, you're worried you're not supposed to be there. I look at my daughter now who's like a year and a half and she's supposed to be everywhere. <laughs> The bathroom, whatever. She's supposed to be everywhere you are. Yeah. And like, it really is like, try to act more like a child. No, that's bad advice. <laughs> that is not good advice. I don't think that is at all, because I think there is something where it's just like enjoying it, having fun in the moment. And again, I think that's another thing that comes across with you guys and doing the things that you do. There is an element of fun. And I think that's why people respond to it so much. Well, and that's why we get to do some really ridiculous stuff sometimes and like maybe the tv show is one and like going to the red carpet of it, well like and there's something else that's pretty cool that you guys are going to be working on next right is it the graphic novel yeah yeah that's a ridiculous thing we get to do and it's really great and i think that one of the things that has kind of kept us going is like we are definitely this will surprise no one that knows us, not too cool for it. <laughs> and so we still get really excited about yeah. things is when someone's like, hey, do you want to come do this? It's like, yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous, of course. I don't know why you want me there, but yes. And like, so it, it, it makes for like really excited, especially Justin and Griffin and I all kind of share that. And so when the three of us get to do something together, we instantly revert to like our teenage selves yeah. of like, yeah, this is dumb. We love it. Let's do this. <laughs> well, and talk a little bit about, because there are so many things that have come out of the one podcast into you all having your own and now the TV show and then the graphic novel. How does that feel when you realize, okay, this has turned into a huge thing that we could never probably possibly have imagined when you started? It is, it's really weird because, I mean, not only have our lives changed professionally, like going from just doing My Brother, My Brother and Me 
sitting in our bedrooms to now doing my brother, my brother, and me sitting in completely different bedrooms. <laughs> You're like my brother, my brother, and me, and now my baby too. Yeah, now my baby. <laughs> um, but doing adventures and stuff, but also, yeah, families. I mean, uh, I had just started dating my now wife, Teresa, when mm -hmm. we started the podcast. Griffin had not met Rachel, who he's now married to. Uh, we have all moved a bunch. We've all had, Justin didn't have any kids. Now he's got two, I've got one, Griffin's got one. All of this stuff has happened as we've been doing it. So not only is it like, you can listen to the show and listen to us like learn how to make the show mm -hmm. but you it is literally like a time capsule of us learning how to be adults it is really weird <laughs> which is why you're like don't listen to those don't first listen ones. to the first hundred we were not not only adults we were not good humans at that point we were subpar humans and now we're okay humans now we're fine <laughs> we're doing okay Having done so many episodes and being part of this project for so long and just having it be your family that you're working with, are there any moments or shows that really, really stand out to you? That's such a good question. Well, we just did uh, for the Max, so I'm on the MaximumFun.org, and we just did the Max Fun Drive, and every year we do bonus content that mm -hmm. you can only get if you become a donor. And for Adventure Zone, we recorded an episode called Four Sherlock Holmeses and a Vampire, <laughs> who is also one of the aforementioned Sherlock Holmeses where each player plays a different Sherlock Holmes as you try to solve a crime, but really you're trying to figure out which one's the vampire. And it was a completely bonkers, stupid idea that Justin came up with that somebody then wrote out the game for us. And it was one of them, it's like one of the most things, like yeah. fun things I've ever done. And like that is, it's a very silly, wonderful thing that we get to do. And, and pretty much like every episode we record, like there always comes a moment like, I think now, like, we'll start thinking about, like, okay, time to make the show. And then there always comes a point when that kind of falls away and it returns to just, like, me, Justin, and Griffin making each other laugh. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot we were recording this. And yeah. it just became the conversation. Or, like, we'll be recording Adventure Zone and pretty soon, like, we forget that we're rolling on it and it's just about, like, us having fun. And, like, that's still my favorite thing about it is at the heart of it, even though we've been doing it now professionally for a while, at its heart, it's still us just getting together and trying to make each other laugh. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really nice. <laughs> well, and for a lot of people here too, I know that within the con space. Um, so the best advice and the advice I give anyone who asks me about starting a podcast, start it because you want to. Uh, record with somebody you love talking to about a topic you love talking about. Have no intention of becoming a professional at it or making money at it or anything like that. Just talk about something you love with someone you love. And then if eventually it becomes something, that's great. But even if it never does, it's still just the thing you enjoy doing because you like talking about the thing you're talking about and you like doing it with the people you do it with. And like that, that's right now, it's nice that we get paid for the shows that we make, but we'd be doing My Brother, My Brother and Me and Adventure Zone anyways, because we just love doing it. And the thing is podcasting is a really long, long-term investment of time. I mean, like I said, mm -hmm. 400 episodes of My Brother, My Brother and Me, and we, we just are starting to figure it out. And so, like, I, you can't start a it's podcast and, like, you can't, like, go 10 episodes in and be like, no one's listening. Sometimes you got to go, like, 200 before you're like, hey, we're starting to make a name for ourselves. Yeah. So do it because you love it. And it's the reason you should do anything. I love it. Well, I feel like we got a little advice from you here, which is epic. Oh, no, don't it's follow like that advice. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Advice is terrible. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Travis, for coming out here thank and chatting. You. And thank you guys all for coming out and hanging out with us. Hi. Make sure you check out the podcast, the TV show, yes. the graphic novel that's coming out, which I'm sure, what, next year you'll be here signing it. Yeah, I'm sure. Be so cool. You can go to McElroyShows.com and find out everything we have there. All right. And make sure you guys are using the hashtag C2E2 and hashtag it's a fan thing. I'm Tiffany Smith. And make sure you are staying on the sci-fi site so that you don't miss anything here coming out of C2E2. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.